Now we'll be moving on to foreign bodies in the nose. As with the ears, the majority of foreign bodies in the nose will be up the noses of children, as not many adults are really foolish enough to put a foreign body up the nose. In fact, since I've started my ENT placement, I haven't dealt with one foreign body up the nose of an adult. You, Omar? No. As with the ear, there are three types of foreign body in the nose, organic, non-organic, or battery. The only difference is, unlike the ear, foreign bodies in the nose should be removed as soon as possible due to the risk of aspiration. Hi sir, hi I'm Dr Nicola. Um, I believe you've got a foreign body up your nose, is that right? I, I do, yeah. Okay. What What have you actually got stuck up there? Um, it's actually just a small um, a small kitten. Well, yeah, don't worry about that. I mean, we, I see that all the time. And have you noticed sort of any sort of foul-smelling discharge from that nostril? I don't. I mean, what kind of foul smell? Like a sort of foul smell, like um, almost like a sort of rancid badger vomit, that sort of smell. I don't... I don't really know what rancid badger vomit smells like. Oh, um, it's like rancid mongoose vomit, but a bit more badgery. Right, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, it smells like that. To examine the nose, one needs a pen torch and a thumb. The key point is to push the nose back to adequately visualise inside the nostrils. Perfect. An alternative option is to use a photocom. A small tip is that one can use a metal tongue depressor or a lax retractor placed underneath the nose to assess whether or not a nostril is occluded. This is done by asking the patient to breathe over the lax and to assess the pattern of condensation. As you can see in this example, there are two discrete areas of condensation from each nostril. This shows that the nostril has not been occluded and that we were in fact demonstrating using a non-occluded face. Non-invasive methods, these methods work by increasing the pressure in the nasopharynx and forcing foreign bodies out through a single nostril and also using mother's kiss and also attempting to use a bag valve mask as demonstrated. So the first thing to try non-invasively, if the child's old enough to understand, you can ask them to occlude the nostril that doesn't have a foreign body in it to close their mouth and take a deep breath out. <laughs> Obviously, if the child isn't old enough to explain this to or to carry out as I just demonstrated, then you might need to try something called the mother's kiss, which is essentially the same, except that the mother seals her lips around the child's mouth, like mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and you again seal the non-occluded nostril, and the mum just blows a short, sharp blast into the child's mouth and hopefully the foreign body should come flying out like this. Um, we're going to now demonstrate the mother's kiss on Omar. Uh, obviously his mum's not here to do it today, so somebody had to fill in. And I'd just like to emphasise that this is in the interest of medical education. I am going to do it. Please. Come on, in the interest of medical education. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. Come on then man, do it. Come on, they're standing here. Come on.
If the non-invasive measures are not successful and the foreign body can be visualized, one should then attempt manual removal using either forceps, a blunt hook, or a wax hook, or even suction, depending on the nature and texture of the foreign body. Okay, sir, so I'm um, just going to try and get this foreign body out for you now. If that's sure. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Is it going to hurt much? Who knows? It should be noted that young children soon become intolerant with multiple attempts at removal. So if you are not confident removing the foreign body, please call a colleague from the ENT team to come and try it. If the foreign body is not able to be visualized or manual removal is unsuccessful, the child or adult may need to go to theatre to have an examination under anaesthetic.